So this is a design from the Fusion 360 forum and it's a usual frame design and it's designed in a very usual way, unfortunately. And that creates a few problems. So there's lots of join origins here. And uh, what was done is that this part here was downloaded as a step file likely from 8020. And it comes in a specific length and it's then inserted into this design it's a component, the link is broken, and then this, uh, this object is lengthened using the push-pull tool. Um, if you want to do this a little bit more parametrically, you can use a user parameter and you end up with bait links and you might actually have to engage in some math um, to be able to adjust the fun overall length and maybe also uh, the base dimensions of this sort of box frame. But really the only user parameters you need is length, width, height, and in this case also the thickness of this uh, base plate, which is the metal, uh, metal base height. So I'm going to approach this slightly differently, um, more in line with what you would find in, in a frame generator in Autodesk Inventor or SolidWorks. And it's just a lot more manual, but still more parametric and lean than this form of the design. So what I've basically done, I've uh, created, I basically stripped that existing design of all geometry and everything else. And the only thing I'm left with is these three user parameters. So, but first I don't have that original download that, uh, that step file. So I'm just going to take one of those here and save it out into the data panel into its own design. I don't care about the length because I don't need it and save it out into the data panel. And there it is, I can open it up now and I need to unhide it and need to get rid of that part of the timeline and actually I can disable the entire timeline because I don't need it. This is a static part. The size isn't going to change or the size, the profile size isn't going to change. Um, what I'm going to do now is, well, first of all, I move that body up into the upper structure and delete the subcomponent because I don't really need it. Then I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane and I'm going to project the entire face here into that sketch. Now, if, you, if you're in a design that uh, requires lots of these profiles and generally is bigger, you may, you may want to consider not projecting all these um, fillets and that internal geometry because it's not really needed. And that creates a lot of geometry later on. So now I have this sketch. I don't even need the body anymore. I delete that as well. And um, for assembly purposes, I will create one joint origin if you want this to be a little bit more of a universal component, you might want to create more than one joint origin. So I'm just going to basically snap it to the middle and this is the 30 by 30 millimeter profile size. So from the middle it's 15 times 15 millimeters offset that joint origin. So there it is. And that's, uh, that's all I'm going to do for this particular design. So I'm going to save that, close it out and in my, in my new design, I'm going to create a skeleton sketch and I personally prefer, it's a little bit more work, I personally prefer the least amount of construction lines that I can get away with. So I just use the horizontal vertical constraint to make sure my sketch is always symmetric. So that dimension is the width. That is the length and that's all we need for this sketch. So instead of um, creating a 3D sketch, which I, could, which I could also have done, I'm just using an offset plane with the height parameter and then create another sketch on that offset plane. So that will be a 3D sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project the outline into that sketch 
from the lower sketch and then I'm going to enable 3D sketch and create lines on all four corners and those lines are fully constrained and in, in any other form of 3D sketch that's often difficult to do so I'm going to stick to 2D sketches unless I really do need a 3D sketch. So here's our basic frame, uh, our outline. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new component uh, that is for the base blade. And I want the origin of that base plane to be located here at the corner. So I'm going to just join it to that corner here and then I'm going to create my sketch and project the outline or part of the outline into that sketch and we'll create one other line to define the width of that piece and that dimension is 30 millimeters because this is a 30 by 30 profile. So E for extrude, that was too much, that wasn't the right sketch. I can now just go ahead and turn this sketch off and that was material base height and there we have that component. I'm going to activate the top level because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to insert that profile sketch that we created earlier, insert into current design. There it is, I'll leave it there for now and I'm going to break the link. Okay, so we have that joint origin there and I'm going to take that and join that here to this line. So now I'm going to activate that component because I'm going to create a sweep. Um, oops, that was the wrong tool, sweep and I'm basically selecting that profile and that sweep path and there we have our first profile. So I need to turn that sketch back on. <clears throat> so the next thing I need to do is uh, we need uh, one of those legs. So let's create that next. Um, I'm going to select it. Control C for copy or just right click and copy but then um, I'm going to use a co save copy as that creates a new component and um, then paste new is what I need to do. So let me select that again, control C and paste new and that creates a new independent component. So let me rotate it the way I need it and want it and say okay. So. First, let's rename this component. That would be top and in the y direction. And then we rename this component into maybe corner z direction and activate that component. Actually, we can delete that sweep. We don't need that sweep. The only thing we need is our sketch. We can also see there was a position capture feature created by me just dragging this stuff around. That's fine, we delete that later. Um, and we need to unhide the drawn origin and perhaps the sketch as well. And then we're gonna just go ahead and join that drawn origin here to that line. That sketch is oriented properly. And I also need to make sure that I activate this component. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Well, almost I'm going to use an extrude and I select my profile plane. I choose two sides and instead of distance, I choose two object. And that little arrow here with the bar tells me in which direction I should select. And I do the same thing here. I select that face and there is my next component. So activate the top level again and take this component, control C 
And in this case, that's just a paste. So that's control V and I move this over here, closer to my point of insertion. And I'm going to unhide the join origin again. And uh, join that to this sketch line here, rotate it into the correct orientation. And there we go. So we have now um, four of those frame members. Uh, because I created that sketch symmetric around the origin, um, what some people do, or what I've seen often done, we're going to create mirror and mirror in the bodies, but components in this case. That seems to be the natural thing to do, but in Fusion 360, that actually creates independent components, meaning when you make a bill of material, instead of having four lines, uh, each with two occurrences, or actually in case of this leg, you would have one, uh, one line with, with a counter of four, um, you have duplicates. So instead of having four lines, now you have eight. So we don't want that, but that's why I created that symmetrically. So in this case, instead of using a mirror, we just use a circular pattern. So I change that to circular, I pick components. And of course that depends on what, what you are designing, whether that's the right choice or not. And say, okay. So now we have patterned those, but obviously they're not joined to anything. They're just uh, pre-located in space. And to do this, I use a rigid group joint. I don't need to include child components because my uh, my components don't have any child components. And I can select any of the others, um, but I usually use the top level component, the origin. Um, and if you take a look at the counter, we have these four components and the top level component that makes five selected. So, okay. And now they're properly joined. So the only other thing I need is control C. I need uh, another component paste new important because this is uh, going to have a different length so it needs to be a different component and rotate that into the proper orientation it's not really that necessary because the joint is going to take care of it i'm going to again delete that sweep unhide the joint origin and unhide the sketch and now I'm going to join this again here to the center. It's properly oriented. And again, I cannot, well, let's first give it a good name, top X, and then activate it. So when I activate it, that extrusion actually ends up in this component. And again, change this to two sides, two object, in this case, go first into this direction, and then we go here into this direction. Okay. And now we almost have a complete frame. We need one more component. I could use another circular pattern, but I'm just going to go to C, Control V, and just move it over there. Unhide the joint origin. And um, join it to this sketch line here. Uh, one advantage of using this method is that if even if you provide this profile in that uh, in that component here in the data panel, if you add more joint origins, they're all here in the middle of the profile and they don't bunch up together here where you have joined all these, um, these profiles because these joint origin icons in the viewport as well as the joint icons, they don't scale when you zoom in and zoom out. So when you zoom out, the, you have the same size of icon and they all bunch up here and that uh, makes quite visually a mess. So now we have a completed frame, everything is joined properly. The only thing else that we have to do, we can turn the joints off, we don't need to see those anymore. Um, we can turn that sketch off, we don't need to see that anymore. And in our vertical members, we also don't need to see the sketch anymore. 
and we don't need to see the origin of our base plate so that makes a pretty clean design and the nice thing is now if I go into my user parameters and I change the dimension and it's fully parametric and this method also works very nicely if the frame is a lot more complicated your sketches might be getting a little bit more complicated than they are now but admittedly a rectangle as we have it right now is very simple so the only other thing that's left to do is delete these position capture features because I really not need it. Uh, not big a deal in this small design, but if you have a larger design with lots of position capture features, they can slow your design down quite significantly. So here it is. Uh, that's how I usually design frame, frames in uh, Fusion 360. Hopefully that helps.